Hi guys, how are you doing? Lisa here again and today um, we're doing something a little bit different. Um, I'm here with Dina Kaplan um, who is currently filming second season Dance Academy here in <laughs> Sydney um, and Dina is one of my clients and we started talking the other day um, about her progression from being very very heavily involved in classical ballet and how she's actually managed to transfer that through into a full-on career in dance but also on film so she's got the awesome opportunity of having her two loves of dancing and acting in the same job <laughs> so we just wanted to pick a brain a little bit today about some of the things that you need to be careful of if you're thinking about this as a career um, and basically everything that's gone on in the last few years <laughs> so right. thank you no worries. Um, so you did start off as a bit of a bunhead um, yeah. very heavily into ballet how did you actually take it from that kind of situation to where you are today well, I um, I was quite serious about ballet from yep. a young age, and when I was about twelve or thirteen, I realised that you know ballet was really tough, and I didn't know <laughs> if I could do yeah. it. So I started looking at other things I loved, and that was you know theatre and acting and singing. Yeah, and I started taking classes and doing all different forms of training. Yeah, and I realised that I was equally passionate about other things. Yeah. So it was kind of I guess a gradual thing. Gradual thing. Yeah. So you started off in Melbourne. Where have you kind of moved through to get back to <laughs> everywhere? <Sydney>? Everywhere. <laughs> well, Tell us a little bit. I, so I, I'm well. I'm born in South Africa, and I yep. started doing ballet then. And then yep. I moved to Melbourne and continued all my dancing. Yep. And then when I was um, 16, I was cast in The Lion King, which was a musical that was touring Australia. And then it went. I would so love to be in The Lion King. <laughs> It was good fun, and yeah. and that went over to Shanghai, and it kind of gave me a bit wow. of a taste of touring and traveling, yeah. which How was very exciting. For? Um, four months, I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then um, after that, I decided that I wanted to audition for a contemporary dance school, yeah. and I went uh, to Alvin Ailey in New York, yeah. and I ended up staying in New York for about amazing. three really years. Is. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. And then moved to LA for a little while because I. All of a sudden, missed my acting. <laughs> I couldn't decide what I wanted to do. Yeah. And while I was in LA acting, I heard about auditions for Dance Academy, and I yeah. sent a tape. Yeah. And that brought me back to Sydney. Woohoo! So yeah, now we we'll get circle. to over here. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Now, so it sounds like you've had an amazing um, kind of career path already. Was it always plain sailing? Like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> Not no. quite so simple. No. no, that was. What kind of things did you come up against that you had to? really work through? Well, I think as a dancer there's constant challenges, but yeah. I think the biggest thing for me from a young age was the realisation that I was never going to be a ballerina and that yeah. was How all I wanted. How old were you at the time? I was probably about 14, I guess, mm -hmm. and I realised that, I mean, I still think, I still think I so passionately wanted to do it, but I kind of realised that maybe, you know, I didn't have the body for it or the turnout yeah. for and it. And you were doing it, but you were at the Australian Ballet School. I was at the Australian Ballet yeah. School and I was associate there and I was taking it, you know, very seriously. But unfortunately, it kind of hit me that I needed to start, you know, thinking about other things. And was that coming from you? Like, were you feeling it or were yeah. other people saying it to you? Or? A bit of both. I mean, I think it came from me in terms of I could feel that my body couldn't do a lot of the things yeah. that I wanted it to do classically. Yeah. But you can work with that now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah. I guess it also came from other things, you know, being told you don't have the right body yeah. and that kind yeah. of stuff is pretty tough. Yeah. So how did you deal with it when you have that coming up? Because I remember saying yeah. kind of thing, you're going to be too big. Yeah. Um, how did you actually deal with it at the time? Well, I think it was really hard to deal with, but I remember my mum saying, you know, there's enough room in the there's enough room in the dance world for more than one dancer, and it just made me realise that you know, I, I don't have to just be a ballerina and there's not so just going to be one ballerina, like I yeah. can do everything. I love performing yeah. and I'd always loved performing. I'd love doing yeah. jazz, I'd love doing contemporary, yeah. I'd love acting. So yeah. that kind of, in a way, was a hiccup and in a way it was a good thing because it yeah. kind of made me realise that, you know, one door there closes and another one opens. Exactly. And so where did you go to from there? From yeah, well, classical, classical? So from after classical, then I kind of started, you know, focusing more on my jazz and contemporary and even hip-hop. I yep. really loved that. Awesome. And then, um, uh, I guess, my first professional job was working in a musical called Carousel and mm -hmm. was with a production yeah. company and it was 
beautiful yeah. and that was the first kind of realization I had that oh, wow this is what I, I really really want to do wow. and then it was all about can I ever get another job yeah. like I don't know if I'll ever <laughs> how do I ever happen yeah. um, and I guess after that working professionally there's been so many hiccups as you know I, I had to kind of learn really quickly how to be an adult and yeah. how to deal with serious injuries yeah. how to learn you know how to travel on my own I left home at 16 and well, when you went to for Lansing, Lansing, yeah um, well I moved to Sydney first, so Sydney first Melbourne, yeah. yeah I moved to Sydney first for that I was living on my own and that was 16 yeah. I, you know I've never done my own washing <laughs> I've never cooked you that's know? a massive thing that I yeah. actually find with a lot of the girls um, who are going over as well to professional yeah. professional class school schools and things like that Often when you've been doing so much dancing, you've been living at home, mum's taking care of cooking, <laughs> so cleaning, hard, yeah. everything, all of a sudden you're out on your own. So I actually do a whole lot of work with girls actually preparing that kind of year before yeah. they leave because there's so much stuff that you need so to learn. So much to learn. So much. And it kind of hits you like a ton of bricks that you... <laughs> just how much <laughs> actually need to do your washing. I need to do yeah, washing. Yeah, washing. I need to take out the bins. Your, yeah, on your bed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I guess that all contributes to things like injuries yeah. because you're exhausted and you're stressed and yeah. you're tired and so it's kind Not of learning properly, how to balance yeah. that. You don't get time to do class. You don't yeah. get time to do Pilates or condition. Or, yeah. So I guess, you know, that was a big hip, hiccup. And then... Yeah. So from Sydney then you went off to... Then I moved to New York. Well, then I moved yeah. to New York yeah. after... That show and I mean uh, Alvin Ailey. Yeah, and that was just obstacle <gasps> after obstacle, and people. What, what kind of things did you come up against there? The biggest thing I came up against there was visas because yeah. that's a, a huge challenge. And I was fortunate enough to get an, a working visa over there, yeah. and I was auditioning, and I had some really sad, unfair experiences where I was cast in things and just couldn't do it because of the unions. And yeah. that's really hard to be given a contract and told you, you know, you going to be on Broadway or you're going to be in this movie and um, an equity card or a visa can stop you from doing that and for me that was like one of the hardest things so far career-wise I have to face yeah. that paperwork can come before but talent yeah. you know yeah so and that's something that you really need to know is knowing actually how to find out the information yeah, yeah I felt like I became a lawyer when I was sitting <laughs> over there like you do so much paperwork and yeah. you're on the phone all day to lawyers and to you know your manager and your agent and trying to deal with things that are you know yeah. you don't think as a performer I'm ever gonna have to deal with all this paperwork and that's the thing that we spend so much time training and especially when you're dancing you spend so many hours during the training that you don't ever think of pushing that side of your development you don't think you're gonna have to run through that yeah so. and it's it's all about ambition like if working in the states is something you dream of or working anywhere overseas this is yeah. all part of it and I don't I don't think I realised that at the time, how well, difficult how it is. Yeah, it's involved. Mm -hmm. So then after you were in America, are you were in New York, you moved to I moved LA. to LA for a while yeah. and I had, I mean I've had, in between all the bad times there's been wonderful times, awesome but I had stuff. kind of yeah. a similar experience over there where I was cast in something and couldn't do it because of a visa yeah. and yeah, that's yeah. when I found out about Dance Academy and yeah. I thought to myself, I want to work. <laughs> like, I want to be in a country. Yeah, yeah, I want to be in a country where yeah. I'm free to work. And yeah. um, I loved everything about the show, and it yeah. was kind of a dream come true because I faced this constant battle in my brain whenever I was Doing dancing. I was acting. When I was acting, I was dancing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it was perfect, and that brought me back awesome. here. Yeah. Okay. And you're loving Sydney. Loving Sydney. Yay. It's beautiful. <laughs> And that's actually something that I really, really wanted to bring up, um, was the importance of an agent. Yes. You know, that's something that I know you started really, really early. Yes. How yeah. old were you? I think I was 13, but yeah. I could be wrong. Somewhere, yes. somewhere very early there. on. Yeah. Um, and that's something that a lot of people don't really think about till much later down the track, but it is something that's really, really important. Yeah. Um, what are the kind of things that, who, uh, how did you find your first agent, first of all? Um, Hmm. It's such a good question because I have the most wonderful agent in the whole world and I, I don't <laughs> remember. Her I've been with her since time. I was really young yeah. yet and I'd be nowhere without her but I, I think it was my mum. Um, I've got two sisters who are both performers and I think mum kind of realised, well, <laughs> what am I going to do with these three girls, yeah. you know? <laughs> are you all under the same... We're all with the same agency, oh, wow. yeah. That's so good. I think it was mum who had done research and I think one of... I think she actually ended up calling Equity and saying, yeah. who do you recommend? Who do you recommend? Yeah. You know, 
and they recommended Catherine mm -hmm. and uh, we auditioned and yeah. fortunately, I don't know how, I ended up with her. I was very lucky. Fantastic. So and cool. <laughs> I think that's something that we really, really need to start looking into is what are the pitfalls of not getting a good agent? You know, I'm sure you've heard some pretty nasty stories yeah. about people who have been... Yeah, it can be scary. Around. What kind of things can go wrong? You've well, had a great experience. What kind I've of things had a can wonderful experience, um, but I have heard stories and... You know, sometimes you can be taken advantage of and sometimes you're signing up for things that you don't really know what it is. Or yeah. So I just think it's important to know exactly, um, you know, to, to just know all the information about the agency and make sure you do your research. Like I wouldn't trust someone coming up to you and saying, oh, I'm an agent, I'm sign an up agent, with me and pay me this much money. You know, yeah. it shouldn't be like that. So it and what kind of, um, I, we were talking before, you were saying that some actually don't take commission until you're actually employed. Yeah, well, yeah. I, I think, you know, most legi legitimate agents, you know, wouldn't, don't expect you to pay them up front when you join the agency. Yeah. It's all about, you know, when you're getting the work, you, you pay work. commissions. Yeah, so. which is a really, really important thing. Yeah. And that the, the reason this actually started was um, a couple of weeks ago, I got given the actor's handbook um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, from a friend, um, and he was suggesting that it might be good for some of the dancers. And I thought, well, I had a flick through. I thought, this actually sounds pretty cool. And Dina was the first person I thought of because I thought she's got the, um, the benefit of being both a dancer and an actor and that's where we started talking about the agent thing because there's a lot of information in here on how to find an agent pitfalls to look for all that kind of stuff yeah um what was your first kind of impression when i gave this to you i was so impressed by that book yeah i think it's unbelievable and had i not you know had such had, an well <laughs> yeah but kind of, if i was yeah. kind of all of a sudden now at 22 deciding i wanted to step into the world of acting as a yeah. dancer it would be brilliant. I think you'd learn so much from it. There's things in there that you really only learn from being on set or having bad experiences yeah. or good ones. But, yeah. you know, it kind of, it would be the perfect book to read if it's something, if as a dancer, out. you decide, you know, maybe I want to try acting. And we actually discovered, um, pure coincidence, that your agent actually contributed to the yeah. book as well. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so there are a lot so of people who contributed to it. Um, but we were looking through um, a couple of the other things. There was a little bit in here on self-promotion. Yes. Um, which is something that a lot of people do ask about as well, is, you know, well, if an agent can do it, I can do it myself. Mm -hmm. um, it is a possibility. Um, what are your kind of views on promotion? yourself within the industry both as a dancer and mm. as an actor well as I was saying to Lisa before I think you know self promotion is important in certain ways like making sure you know your um, information online is updated and yeah, like IMDb like and, and AT2 I think. yeah AT2 yeah, yeah. Um, any kind of the making sure you have a good show reel and yeah. a good um, voiceover reel and sometimes even if you haven't had um, acting work as such you can do courses that you can get a showreel from so at least if you're auditioning for an agent you've got something to show them exactly there's a lot yeah. of places in australia that help you you know they find you actors and directors and bring yeah. you together and you can do yeah. courses that at the end of your course you have a whole lot of scenes at least you've got something Just to show something to actually put out there and yeah. same with voiceover reels and commercial reels all yeah. that kind of stuff so i think that's a lot of resources in the yeah. back of people to contact um, yeah. who you can actually do use for those kind of things yeah, yeah. and i think Part of self-promotion is having a great headshot and knowing how yeah, to write a good CV and once again taking classes and meeting people so all of that's part of self-promotion without going over the top yeah. and you know yeah. trying to oversell yourself. Oversell. Yeah. Or as you're saying on Facebook, not such a good yeah. idea, try not to sell yourself <laughs> yeah. um, on too many things online. Yeah. But looking at professional ways of really good ways that you can market yourself um within the industry yeah and what are the differences do you think between doing that as a dancer and doing it as an actor well i think um as a dancer you probably have a lot more success because yeah. there's a lot of commercial work um that you know choreographers will just kind of see people in class and say give yeah. me your headshot and yeah. come to this audition yeah, but or, then you need to be prepared for it yeah so but i think like... self-promotion in that way is a lot easier yeah. Um, I think as an actor, it's quite difficult to get auditions for things if Without you're not And same with theatre, yeah. I think it's it's more difficult. Yeah, because yeah. a lot of the roles are only actually published through those. Yeah, but often, I mean, not often, sometimes there is open calls. I know yeah. things like Hairspray yeah. had open calls and yeah. Lion King had open calls. So yeah. sometimes for theatre, you can slide in. You can sometimes, you know, have good yeah. luck. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, the other big, big, big important thing that we were going to talk about is auditions and preparation for auditions. Mm -hmm. Again, we've got a stack of info in here. 
what are some of the things that you've kind of learned along the way that really have helped you prepare for the auditions that you've got successfully? Um, <laughs> <laughs> a few of those. Only yeah. a few. Hardly any. anything. <laughs> um, well, I'm actually, to be honest, a terrible. I'm terrible at auditions. Really? And I, I get really nervous. Ah. So for me, I think a huge thing was learning how to deal with my nerves. And yeah. the way I did that was always not over-preparing, but researching and yep. making sure I'd done all the work and I knew the role, not only the role I was auditioning for, but what the play was about or what the yeah. film was about or what, even like if it's a dance show, researching the choreographer yep. and who you're yep. about to audition for and what work he's done in the past and what he likes and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, and I think, yeah, dealing with grounding yourself with nerves and the best way to do that is to practice. So whether it means kind of doing mock auditions or doing heaps of castings or yep. doing courses. Yeah, that and that's the same important. with both acting and dancing. It's, yeah. it's just getting that frequency. So when you rock into an audition, it's not like, oh my oh goodness, my I haven't yeah. done this for however long. Because then um, you kind of overdo it, I find. Exactly. Especially with dancing. I know yeah. I used to, we used to have a teacher who used to make us do one class a week, an audition class. So we'd come and awesome. he'd get choreographers awesome. to watch us. and you just realise how much you try too hard, you know? So, hard. so it's nice to actually have that practice yeah. with the adrenaline and yeah. knowing how to do it. And that. also for TV um, acting roles as opposed to theatre acting roles, being able to modify your performance depending on what Absolutely, you're going into. Absolutely, yeah. And I guess with theatre as well, which is so important as a dancer, you really need to start preparing songs because yeah. every theatre audition you ever do, you'll always need to sing a song. And even yeah. if you're a terrible singer and you're uncomfortable, they often just want to hear if you can kind of hold a tune. Hold a tune. Yeah. And, you know, that for me was really scary because, you know, I didn't really know if I could sing and yeah. that was like probably where I had to do the most work as a dancer yeah. was then go have all these singing classes. And, and that's something that we really, really need to think about, especially if you're branching out of the a straight classical model, um, is that, like we were saying, there is a lot of work that you have to be very, very flexible. So you've got your acting, your dancing and your singing. That triple threat is really, really important these days because there is so much work that, that you will be suddenly asked to come in and things might change. Yeah, and, the and more... it's expected. Yeah, yeah, it's expected. Yeah, it's Because there's so expected. many people that do three. And I think <laughs> especially in Australia, it's expected because we have so few shows that come here and so little work in comparison yeah. to the States or the UK. So over there I feel like you can specialise a little bit more yeah. but here you really need to be quite well rounded to have consistent work yeah. otherwise the jobs are kind of really <laughs> far and far between. Between. Yeah. 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 So it's important to take different classes, yeah. try different things even if it freaks you out just yeah. to try. And that's something you said you started quite early doing yeah. different styles of dance and things like that, yeah. just really kind of rounding out yeah. your knowledge. Well, I, yeah, I, I just think that I was very um, determined to work and ambitious and that yeah. meant that I kind of I guess challenged myself and instead of just doing ballet I'd be like okay well I'm gonna go to hip-hop tonight and yeah. then I'm gonna go to salsa and then I'm yeah. gonna go to singing and exactly. acting and yeah just you may not love all of it because I don't love yeah. all of it but it but, helps and often it's those things that you don't really really love like you said singing was a little yeah, bit scary for you. yeah so sometimes we need to work at the things that we don't find quite so easy rather than just saying oh no no I'll just yeah. get that bitch um actually working through those yeah those and often that come like up. ballet dancers can be really great actresses because they've learnt all about playing roles and interpreting music and feeling and emotion so and it makes a huge huge difference in it for me um I'm, I'm the biggest technique freak there is in the clinic when i go to a performance i want to be wowed oh, i want God. to be yeah. totally taken in i did a lot of stage work myself um and i hate seeing somebody dance technically on stage so there is that that quality that actress quality or actor quality that you need to be able to totally embody the person who you are being on stage and it's something that I feel is lost a lot and mm -hmm. people are really really focused on their dance training so I think even if you're not okay, planning yeah. on being an actor um, then having some acting training really really helps support yeah, your dance training. and it helps you have a voice and exactly. makes you a better dancer. Yeah. And even promoting yourself within your auditions and things like that if you're used to actually um, communicating mm -hmm. verbally, you know, Absolutely. things like that makes things so And they just easier. help each other, dancing helps you so much with acting because it you're so good at all the physical stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And acting will help you with your dancing. Yeah. You know, so much. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it was funny, I had somebody else working on um, Black Swan. Oh, wow. And um, 
they said it was so so funny because sometimes um, <laughs> in in movies if you've got people who aren't dancers and actually teaching them how to actually yeah. move as a dancer is something really really tricky so dancers have a presence and an awareness of space that actually goes really really well sliding into the dancing world and in quite a few different shows I've heard it that everyone loves working with the dancers who become mm -hmm. actors rather than actors who are trying to be dancers Natalie Portman however did an amazing job Incredible job. Um, and they're very professional and hard working yeah. extremely <laughs> so um, that is something that I think is really important to kind of say you've got great grounding in your dancing but just explore the edges a little bit yeah yeah so if we've got um, loads of um, students out there want or kind of thinking about you know maybe bringing it acting in a little mm -hmm. bit or where to take their career what would be the two things that you kind of little pearls of wisdom or things that you really think people should focus on to mm -hmm. actually make a professional career um I think the two Probably most important things one would be setting yourself apart from other people which yeah. I guess means going the extra mile and working yeah. that bit harder by opening you know widening your spectrum and taking yeah. more classes and doing more things and going to auditions and yeah. scaring yourself a little yeah. bit you know like yeah. going overseas or, yeah. or doing what you can do yeah. um, and kind of pushing the boundaries while being confident about it like yeah. not not just following the crowd because Definitely. that's what you think is going to make your career like you need yeah. to kind of you don't need to be like everybody no else. <laughs> yeah and and say what like I, I went to a very very strict ballet school and I used to say yeah. to my ballet teacher well I want to do a jazz solo in the concert yeah. you know <laughs> like yeah. have a voice you yeah. know and and do what you think will help your career awesome and I guess the second most imp or not, not the I guess the most important thing of all is learning how to take care of your body yes. and yourself because for me that's probably been the biggest setback in my working career has been injuries and now um, we're working on that working on all that <laughs> but I, I kind of I wish if I could go back it would have been you know instead of throwing yourself into things all the time especially yeah. being a flexible dancer kind of yeah. learning how to manage your body and not just physically but also mentally and things like nutrition I think all of that is so important so, it comes so hand important. in hand with yeah, career yeah definitely well Dina thank you so so much I for coming that. and talking to us today I didn't bore you all. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking how long should we talk for um, but this is something that I would really 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 encourage you if you are thinking of any kind of career um, in dance or theatre or musical theatre or acting or whatever try and get as much of a grounding in the details of the industry um, as possible it's something that we often don't get with um, you know within our dance school unless you've got an awesome teacher who has been very much in the industry and there are some great teachers out there who are so start asking your teachers some questions but also looking at like I said resources like this um, brilliant yeah. brilliant <laughs> um, and if you're interested in this check out all the details below this is something that I I don't have a financial affiliation with it just kind of came across my desk but I am always trying to find ways that I can actually help dancers yeah. and it says, move on. You know, it says the actor's handbook, but I think <laughs> yeah. it can really help dancers, especially because it's got so much information about getting agents and agents dealing with all the law and contracts. Yeah, being on a professional set, being on a theatre exactly. stage and yeah. all the rules and behind the scenes. So I think it will help with anyone in the entertainment anyone industry. In the entertainment yeah. industry. Wonderful. Thank you so much, no Dina. Worries. We'll see you soon. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, I'll start back the agents. Yeah. Um, Um, and it sounds like everything was kind of pretty smooth, you know, you've had some awesome, awesome opportunities. Was it always plain sailing? You know, did oh, it come no. no, it was definitely not smooth. <laughs> yeah. No. What kind of things did you come up with along the way that you had to kind of work through? Well, I guess the first biggest thing was a realisation from a, you know, a kind of younger age that I was never going to be a ballerina and that was pretty heartbreaking. Yeah, and especially it, when that's something you really yeah, focused on. Yeah, and I was, um, I was at the Australian Ballet School for a while as an associate and I was, you know, that was just my dream to be a ballet dancer yeah. Yeah. and unfortunately I didn't really have the body for it or, you know, the turnout or a lot of things yeah. and so that was the first biggest hiccup was trying to figure out if there was something else I loved equally. Because a lot of girls actually seem to think that, that if, uh, if I'm not going to be a classical <laughs> sorry mine's on the top. should be on silent sorry that's right